ATP is the energy that the mitochondria generates. And ATP is what is the currency of life. Pardon? Adenosine triphosphate. So the wiring, the dendrite and axons, the insulation is called myelin. And in MS, myelin uh, is what's destroyed in many of the dementing illnesses. Myelin is lost uh, as well. And the vast majority of Americans do not eat enough omega-3s, nor do we eat enough uh, B vitamins to make that myelin. Then. If your brain is, has plenty of ATP, so your mitochondria are working well, and it's well wired, so you have plenty of myelin, for brain cell A to talk to brain cell B, it has to secrete a special molecule called a neurotransmitter. Now, the neurotransmitters get made from the amino acids that are brought to it in the bloodstream. Once again, it's from stuff you eat. If you aren't eating the appropriate proteins and able to digest them to bring in the amino acids that you need, you're going to have a hard time making neurotransmitters. One of the neurotransmitters that's particularly low in uh, people with MS is called GABA, G-A-B-A. It's also, we also know that we now are thinking that GABA is low in people who have mental health diseases, bipolar, depression, uh, attention deficit. It's uh, low in people who have chronic pain, fibromyalgia. And making GABA is dependent on sulfur. So you need to have amino acids with sulfur in them. So those are things like taurine, uh, methionine, and cysteine. And the, the reality is, oh my, medical students, are you guys remembering some of these? All right. Um, we aren't eating much sulfur anymore. It's in seafood and in green leaves, and uh, I'll go over that in more detail. But the vast majority of Americans have a diet that's deficient in sulfur. So we have diets that are deficient in the, in the building blocks for our mitochondria. We have a diet deficient in the building blocks for our myelin. And we have a diet deficient in the building blocks for our neurotransmitters. And we wonder why our children have so much learning disabilities, so much depression, so much problems with aggression and behavior problems. We are making their brains sick because we are letting them eat a diet that does not give them the nutrients for their brains to work. But you won't. You'll be on the top of your class here. OK, next slide. Okay. So in addition to making energy, making that adenosine triphosphate, the mitochondria will convert the glucose to the ATP so they can do the work of living, but they also purify the cell, get rid of the toxins. You see, all the food that we eat, um, much of the food we eat now has been treated with pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers. The meat uh, gets a variety of antibiotics. Uh, it gets a variety of hormones. The indoor environments have a variety of cleaning solvents on them and uh, building pest control kinds of things. We have perfumes in our soap. We are exposed to hundreds of chemicals every day. Even go, trying to go organic, you're still exposed to hundreds of chemicals every day. And your mitochondria are going to have to help you get rid of them. So again, you want to have healthy mitochondria so they can process and get rid of the trash. Okay. Now, if your mitochondria, as they are making energy and getting rid of trash, it's a chemical plant. And all chemical plants have a little bit of trash of their own at the end. Even our beloved mitochondria. As much as I love them, they'll make some trash too. Now, if I have a diet rich in antioxidants, my mitochondria can make that little bit of trash. The antioxidants will scoop it up, get rid of it, and it's not a problem. If my diet is poor and I don't have many antioxidants, those free radicals are not scooped up and they go around and start hurting my mitochondria or they go to the nucleus and hurt my DNA. 
Either way, either my cell dies early and then I have premature aging, because I only have so many um, divisions for each one of my cells and then they get to the end of the line, or worse yet, my cell says, I'm superwoman, I don't have to die. And we call that cancer. Next. Okay, so let's talk about building blocks and what you need to eat to get them. The B vitamins, coenzyme Q, this, the, the building blocks to have happy mitochondria. Nutritional yeast, wonderful. It's a great powerhouse of B vitamins, ubiquinone, and minerals. Great stuff. A tablespoon or two every day, very good. Great source of uh, protein, great source of B vitamins. Mushrooms, great source of B vitamins. Uh, dark greens. And we have... Would you bring a class of mushrooms with you, Jeanette? Oh, yes. Are they up here? Here we go. So we have some mushrooms. We have some mushrooms. You want to give me the light so I can show off some of the food here? Yeah. And uh, I've got collard greens. We have some kale, bok choy, purple kale. This is organic and locally grown by Derek Roller right down the Oh, marvelous. Why don't you uh, pass what, off? What's this? Those are the collards. Wonderful. And how do you eat your collards? Every, any way that I can. And that's uh, choy. And uh, I personally love these as salads. I uh, mince these, and I've, uh, I've got some recipes uh, in my ebook. Uh, but I mince them. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll come back to that. The darker the green, the better. It has more chlorophyll. Chlorophyll uh, is very similar. Chloroplasts are very similar to mitochondria, which is why they are so good for us. Yeah. Okay, so what was that? Chlorophyll is very similar to hemoglobin, but it has magnesium in it. And the chlorophyll lives in the chloroplast, which is the little part of the cell, very much like the mitochondria in our cells. Very similar structures, which is why plants that are packed with their chloroplast are so good for our mitochondria. Follow? As I go along, we'll pick up more of these other foods and I'll talk with them as we, as we come along. Okay? Organ meats, wonderfully good for you, packed with B vitamins. Uh, with my caveat, don't overcook them. You want them uh, as rare as you can personally stomach to eat them. You'll have uh, much more of your uh, B vitamins and the B organ meats, heart, tongue, gizzards, liver, slow, slow cook. Who got the cholesterol in the liver and the, the, um, the, the cholesterol? And, and also I, I, I'm, okay. I'm going to, uh, we'll come back to that at the very end. Okay. And I, I will make the caveat that the, um, from my perspective, the micronutrient content of your diet is vastly more important than the total cholesterol content. If you eat a diet rich in the uh, micronutrients, minimize your grains, I, I would say that you'll not have to worry about the total cholesterol content of your diet. Your cholesterol will fall. Yes, we'll, you'll hear more about that too. Now, forgive me, I'm not going to take any more questions because I want to get through all of this. We will have you write out your questions and I will answer the questions at the end. If we take questions as we go, um, I'm not going to be able to get through everything. Next slide, please. Myelin. To make myelin, you need to have B vitamins, in particular at thiamine, but you also need uh, B12 uh, and B6. Uh, for that, greens and mushrooms, nutritional yeast, great source. You need omega-3s. And for that, we're going to have, recommend uh, fish oil, krill oil is very good, hemp oil, uh, which we have here, flax oil, hemp seeds, and hemp milk are all very good sources of omega-3s. The particular... Uh, Omega-3s that you're looking for are called DHA and EPA, the cosahexanoic acid and icosape 